Never would have made it. Okay. So one day, um, you know, I was, and I was showing up to work. I started looking bad you know, okay. during the March planning. Mm -hmm. I was looking bad and I um, was telling someone else that I couldn't sleep. And the person mentioned to me that they had been take, that they take this pill uh -huh. and they sleep. And yeah. I was like, wow, man, I, <laughs> I want to sleep. I yeah. would appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and they gave me one mm -hmm. and I took it. And at the, that particular, that was Xanax. Okay. Right. And then I went to the doctor and I got a prescription for Xanax. Mm -hmm. And then the Xanax wasn't enough. I mean, you know, the doctor wouldn't increase the, the, the prescription, dosage, yeah. the, the dosage. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then the next thing you know, I was in the process of taking the Xanax and opioids back to back, just trying to figure out what to do. Because as you as it, anyone who's ever been caught in the sort of the disease of addiction. Right it just gets worse. Like, yeah. you, you know, you start off a half a pill and now you're at one, two, three, four, yeah, five. Yeah, because your tolerance gets higher. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So it was just a, a nasty cycle of me just popping pills all day, trying to numb my mind. My mind, I mean, I don't know if you can imagine that every second of the day I was having to answer questions, having media contacting us with a new story. Uh, you yeah. know, we, we're, we're, um, we're, misappropriated money. Some person came up with a story about what they think we said, what we mean, white women upset about, about why we want to bring the issues of race into a dialogue about women's rights. Right. Um, I mean, it it's was a lot of pressure a lot. And still my son, I'm still, you know, also, um, trying to be a mom. Um, it was a lot. And, and, and by the way, a lot of folks don't understand that, you're not just um, you're not just hearing it all and sort of dealing with it. I have to make decisions. Like yeah. there are people yeah. depending on me to make the right decisions to say the right things. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure. You don't there no one can prepare you for it. Yeah. It's not that, you know, it's not that kind and of And I feel thing. like everyone calls on you. Well, yeah, but at this time, <laughs> yes, I still deal with it. And I, you know, and, and I do as much as I can, which I'm getting much better, getting older. No, can't do it. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Boundaries and all of that. But at that time, we were leading one of the biggest global movements for women since the feminist movement. But even more, we didn't, the, the, no march has ever had the amount of women that the Women's March brought together, women and our allies, families, loved ones, yeah. ever. It was the biggest in history. Yeah. We didn't even know that's what we were planning towards. But guess what? If those people who want to oppress women, they knew it, they could see it, mm. and they were creating confusion. So <clears throat> one day, um, you know, I was, I, and I was- Okay. So Tamika Mowry was talking about, you know, her addiction. Um, I didn't even realize she had one. She said, getting clean does not mean you won't have moments of shame. However, I promise there is power in your story, no matter how messy. <clears throat> I appreciate her uh, talking about that. But at the same time, like, I have my issues with Tamika Mari, but I was just interested to hear what she had to say. But she was addicted to sleeping pills, I guess, which is honestly something I can understand during that time. Like, probably the only time you have any rest emotionally is when you're sleeping and not being able to get that rest um, made it hard for her to do what she's called to do. And I feel like I, I have a real value for people like Tamika Maori that speak up for, you know, human rights, because it's not everybody's plight to do what she does. And I appreciate the people who are called to do that like her. But essentially, I feel like <clears throat> it's politics. And Tamika has said some things that, you know, just make me feel like she's very male identified. And I don't know if it's because she is a part of, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement and helping black men and black people, period. But a lot of when you're helping black men in civil rights or black people in civil rights, it's kind of male centered, like everything else. So she just has a, a male centered ideal. And I don't know how much I don't know how valuable you could be in a real way when it comes to women's rights if you are also male identified in your approach 
to how you see the things that occur in our community. You see what I'm saying? Like, what was the story, y'all, where she made it, um, uh, made it a, a race thing? I'm trying to think when she made it a race thing and it was black people. I think it might have been the PNB Rock situation where it was obviously a black man killing another black man. And somehow she made it like a race thing, you know, to where it was some some white person's fault or some shit like that. And I was just like, OK, so at what point do we stop with that? At what point do we stop with that? Like, it's one thing to talk about how white people and the system that we live in is responsible for, you know, the disparages, you know, like Republicans trying to stop us from getting relief from paying student loans because the higher percentage of people that owe on student loans are black. So y'all don't care about helping those people. There was a whole bunch of white people, more white people, you probably would feel differently. Like when we're talking about that type of stuff, that's one thing. But when we're talking about a man and his son seeing a rapper pull up to a restaurant in a bad neighborhood and robbing and killing him, I need for you to take white people out of that equation. Because even though we can back it up, to them being responsible for the atmosphere in which those types of things take place, essentially a person is responsible for that act and that person needs to be held responsible for that act because nobody made him do that. His circumstances may have been breeding ground for it, and that's a conversation to have, but that conversation can happen. And at the same time, an adult man decided that he wanted to take his son with him to take another man's life over jewelry, money, or whatever the fuck that it was not, it wasn't worth it. Y'all got caught. Now you and your son are going to be in jail together for I don't know how long, foreseeable future. What did you get out of that? Like, at what point does it become about the black man not being accountable for his own life and the decisions he makes? At what point do you see how the system works and then figure out ways to counteract? At what point? So, yeah, um, she kind of makes my ass itch sometimes, but I thought that was interesting that she had an addiction during that time, right? <clears throat> Most of the black women that are in Black Lives Matter, like Portia, mainly fight for black men's rights, not black women, even though they're black women subject to being harmed in these environments. We as society should not be putting all that responsibility on her. This is not individual fight. It's a humanity fight against white supremacy. I agree. I agree. <clears throat> but I also feel like Everybody isn't going to organize and hold the picket sign. Everybody isn't going to do that. Yeah, Black Lives Matter was absolutely started by Black women. Black men don't start movements these days. <laughs> like, what movements have y'all done lately? Okay, what have you done for me lately? Not a damn thing. Okay, so I wanted to talk to y'all about this situation with Cardi B. I was so confused, okay? <clears throat> and we talked about this on Twitter and a lot of y'all were really upset. So, because I said that I don't think Madonna can take um, credit for women of color, i.e. Cardi, being sexual in her music and that being accepted because Madonna is a white woman. And what was acceptable for her I believe was not acceptable for black women until certain black women did things. So yes, like over time, we can back it all the way up to, you know, your mom's Mabley and the women that sang, you know, nasty blues songs. We can back it all the way up to that time. We can, <clears throat> but essentially, yes, Sam J, I hear what you're saying, but I want you to remember one thing. Janet wasn't as nasty as she, you know, became until Velvet Rope. Am I wrong? And I want us to back it up to the 80s because Madonna was literally the person that took the white women over the ledge with the, you know, we can do crazy sexual shit, right? 
However, at Madonna's same time, there were black artists and those black artists had to be like Whitney Houston. Remember, before Whitney Houston was known for drugs, she was known for being pristine. Pristine, okay? Vocally and in and, and image. So when I compare of that time frame for me, Madonna was able to do whatever the fuck she wanted to do as a white woman. She got flack for it, but she was still able to be successful and do that. At the same time, women had to be like, black women had to be like Whitney or Janet. But Janet was still clean in the era that she was up against somebody like Madonna. Janet didn't become dirty until to me, after Lil' Kim and Adina Howard had already happened. Think about it. Janet was cleaning up until Velvet Rope. Velvet Rope was what, 98? I want to say Velvet Rope was like 98. Lil' Kim and Adina Howard with they ass cheeks out and patting pussy and music videos was about 93 to 95 era. So I feel like even though Janet, you know, was more pop and on the same level as Madonna, she still wasn't able to be as sexual as Madonna until the until like people, lesser artists, and I'm saying lesser because not as famous, artists like Adina Howard did it first. And then the rap girls, Lil' Kim. And Foxy and them rap and all of that and were sexual, but... It was a part of Kim's shtick to shock you. And I do believe that Lil' Kim was probably, you know, uh, influenced by Madonna. I do. I do. Influence, yes. But at the end of the day, when you take it to the people like Cardi, Madonna, you can't really take the credit because essentially you did it, but... These girls wouldn't have been able to do it if Lil' Kim was not pushed to be that. Biggie essentially pushed Lil' Kim to be as over-sexualized and, you know, in your face as possible in order to compete with the street niggas. And the only way to compete with the street niggas was to be overly sexualized. Because as a man, in his mind, I'm not going to listen to a woman that's rapping street shit like a nigga. I want to listen to a woman talk to me about her pussy and all of that. You know, I want to hear a woman talk to me about fucking and about sex. Because that's all I think about when I look at women. So I need her to rap that sex shit to me. And so essentially, he pushed her to be over the top with her, with her sexuality, and she pushed it even more. But her imagery, Lil' Kim's imagery, is what directly affected people like Cardi and Nicki Minaj and all of the other rap girls and anybody else in black, on the black side of the music industry for it to be acceptable because essentially Lil' Kim got a lot of flack for the shit that all of these women now are able to do at a level that Lil' Kim wasn't able to do originally. So if you ask me, I really do. And, and I feel like I've seen documentaries where people in the industry have quoted Adina Howard as being literally the first woman, black woman of that era to be sexual like that in her music. And that is what affected the way the rap girls were able to kind of do their thing. Madonna may have shifted shit in the whole, you know, all of American culture dynamic. But we all know essentially what is acceptable for white people in our country is not always acceptable for black people. So it takes a black person to do it so that the people that look like her can be able to do it more freely thereafter. And I really do feel like Kim and Janet and the women of like the mid to late 90s that really put their pussy in your face in the music, those women absolutely took the brunt of being talked to crazy, not in social media, but in interviews and by people in the industry 
Whereas now I feel like that over-sexualization is acceptable in the industry, but people just have shit to say on social media, which makes it slightly different. Um, Misa Heaton doesn't, uh, Hilton doesn't even get enough credit for what she did for everyone's style. Kim, Mary, Missy Babble. Exactly. She doesn't. Uh, Janet fought to get from under Joe for that reason. She wasn't able to be herself. Jimmy James and Terry Lewis definitely helped her come out of her shell more. They they really did. Charlie made such good music together. Madonna can go somewhere because, ma'am, you took from... And, and this is another thing. Thank you for bringing this up, ranting with Ricardo. Because essentially, we all know Madonna couldn't sing. And she stole all of her dance moves from the gay guys that she came up with in New York. She very much took from black culture, from gay culture, and brought that mainstream and made it popular. But essentially, she took that from somebody. So it's weird when, you know, in our history, white women want to act as if they've made it easier for a black woman to do something when we know in real life to this day, White women can do things in an acceptable manner that black women cannot to this day. I want y'all to tell me a, a great that's able to act like Madonna and still, you know, be can, you know, get the attention and all that the acclaim. Like she's weird as fuck. <laughs> yeah, Madonna clearly was taught how to vote because Shia was choppy in that video. That's what happens when you're the blueprint pioneer. You get the most flack, which makes it for the next generation. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why they that's why it's so aggravating when people don't really understand like the history of how things have happened. But let me read to y'all what Madonna said. 30 years ago, I published a book called SEX. In addition to photos of me naked, there were photos of men kissing men, women kissing women, and me kissing everyone. I also wrote about my sexual fantasies and shared my point of view about sexuality in an ironic way. I spent the next few years being interviewed by narrow-minded people who tried to shame me for empowering myself as a woman. I was called a whore, a witch, a... Uh, <laughs> heretic, and the devil. Now Cardi B can sing about her WAP. Kim Kardashian can grace the cover of any magazine with her naked ass. And Miley Cyrus can come in like a wrecking ball. You're welcome, bitches. I literally paid this woman Amaj so many times because I grew up listening to her. She can make her point without putting clown emojis and getting slick out the mouth. These icons really become disappointments once you make it to the industry. That's why I keep to myself. Um, Why do all these newer artists throw tantrums over being mentioned, no matter what the context is? If this irks you so bad... You never would have made it mainstream 10 to 13 years ago. Please grow up. Cardi says, you are ridiculous. I don't give a fuck who it is. Nobody is going to disrespect me, especially unprovoked. Are you dumb? And see, that's the thing y'all don't understand about the difference between now and back in the day. Back in the day, there were more gatekeepers. So people had to stay quiet when they, were, they felt they were disrespected by somebody that, you know, they looked up to. But nowadays, they don't have to deal with that shit. You disrespect me and I don't give a fuck how long you've been in this, this industry, bitch. Fuck you. <laughs> you know? So I understand. And I also felt like the shit that she said was stupid. But I also feel like Cardi could have felt the way without posting about it. But Cardi's going to post because that's what she does. She's not mad at what she said. If you read the tweet properly, properly, it's the clown emoji after and addressing her as a bitch. Not hard to comprehend. Exactly. Say what you want to say, but don't insult me. The fuck? Nobody gonna little girl me, especially a white woman. Do you hear me? Did you fail reading comprehension? She's only saying she paved the way for sexual songs to become mainstream. She never came for you. What are you reading, ma'am? I know exactly what she said, and I understand it, but that's the tone. Calling me bitch and putting clown emojis. The fuck? What's harder for them to understand that? They, she did. I mean, that was very much disrespectful. You can't gaslight Cardi into thinking she was wrong. Madonna implied that the girls didn't give her credit and then proceeded to put the clown emojis. So who is the clown? Child Madonna looked like the clown. 
Exactly. And I'm not deleting shit. If it was their favorite artist, they would be crying. But since she mentioned the most hated woman on the internet, it's yes, take it. Suck my dick. I said what I said. You can't hear tone through typed words. If I type suck my dick, you're going to hear the tone, bitch. <laughs> you're welcome, bitch. Uh, don't seem rude to y'all or are we just playing dumb because it's Cardi. Listen, I feel like we playing dumb because it's Cardi. Okay. So that's what Cardi had to say about Madonna. And that's what prompted me tweeting that I feel like I don't like that. I don't feel like any, um, I don't feel like a white woman can take credit for somebody like Cardi B being able to do WAP. I just don't. Um, and I can absolutely think about black artists who've made sexual music before you. And during your time period. And once again, I'm going to say it. There is homage to be paid. But ultimately, it's a little muddy for me. It's a little muddy for me. Because I'm going to tell y'all, as a black person growing up in the South, I know a lot of you like, you know, you Northern people, y'all y'all black people, y'all grew up listening to Madonna. No, like not my era of black people. No, we didn't. Like, yeah, music makes the people come together. Yeah, we, we knew a, a couple of the songs. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm Tammy's comment, too. Like, y'all would feel a way if she said that shit about y'all. And I feel like, you know, Madonna at some point gets very disrespectful. Madonna does a lot of disrespectful shit as far as I'm concerned. And I think she's at a point in her life where she feels like she can be disrespectful and people are just supposed to be happy that she even mentioned their name. You know. We're not in an era where we're going to keep doing that. Um, I personally feel like Madonna is a testament to white girls being able to be mediocre and blow up on doing such. Like, that's what it feels to me. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Madonna was never one of the white girls that I was going run to. I liked her in the movies. Um, but yes, I'm about to say, like, Hurt so good. Like all Millie Jackson and, you know, Denise LaSalle. There were so many other black artists in blues that talked about sex in, in mainstream music. Like you weren't the first one to do it. You were just the first blonde white girl to do it and blow up doing so. You know what I'm saying? Like I would even give Prince and them a little bit more credit for people being able to be more sexual you know what I'm saying? Like, she wasn't the only one doing those things in the 80s, to be clear. Like, Madonna was not the only person doing shocking things in the 80s. It was really the overall vibe in the 80s for everybody to just be out here doing, you know, wild ass shit. Child, we not even gonna get into the fuck you sym symphony. Fuck you. Fuck you. But yeah, y'all, you know, that's just how I feel about it. I'm sorry. That's how I feel about it.